know Frenchy as a the friendly, charming guy, you know, and uh, I think he evolved a lot uh, in the Nun too. Well, there's five years that went through. Uh, he's been possessed, but he's also more mature. We know a, a little bit more about his background also. And so I would say he's more mature, more evolved, more um, less childish and more, yeah, a little bit more like a, an adult. So it's five years later. We're in the south of France, um, in Aix-en-Provence, actually, and he's working in a boarding school uh, for girls only, for young girls, and he's working there as the maintenance guy. Um, he still doesn't know that he's uh, infected, uh, that he's possessed by Valak. So he's kind of in a weird state where he feels sick. He has some kind of um, epileptic episode, um, but he doesn't know about it. And uh, he's trying to just move forward with his life. He actually met someone. Uh, her name is Kate. And I think he's really uh, into her. Those two parts of Maurice, the, um, the nice Frenchie, as we know him, and the new, tormented, scary Maurice, was actually my whole challenge uh, for, the, for the sequel. It was uh, the most exciting part of this, uh, I, I mean, for me. Uh, was trying to find the right balance between the two of them. And uh, it was really the prep work. And now I'm just trying to do that in front of the camera and I, I hope it works. I'm the only male lead in the movie and I'm surrounded by four women, uh, very different from each other, and they're all trying to save me. So I'm the damsel in distress. I'm the squire in distress. And I love it. I think we're all tired of the um, Prince Charming saving the princess. But the best thing I'd say that working with young actors like them is to see the joy and the excitement uh, in their face when, the, when they're working on a, on a set. It reminds me of how much I love my job and I, I love acting and how lucky I am. For me, it's kind of like a behind closed door setting because all, all of the action is inside that school and it's, it feels very close to the, to the outside world. And I think it's a great, it's a, it's a brilliant move to set the whole scene, like the, the whole horror in that school with innocent girls. Because, I mean, what would happen to those innocent girls if Valak was unleashed? Aix-en-Provence is a very old city and uh, very old buildings as well. And we, can, we don't have much to do to recreate the 1950s in Aix-en-Provence. So it was a great location all along. And... Uh, I think it's great to yeah to put that in here, and I think Aix-en-Provence also, as a as a city of the south of France, has a lot of history um, itself. Michael is a great director. I think um, he's very efficient. We do a lot in one day. He knows what he wants, and that's very cool for an actor because you you just go straight forward. And he's also very listening. Like he welcomes. To, any ideas, good or bad, and it, it makes me feel good because I like to be uh, involved in the creative process. I think the nun, like the figure of a nun, like religion, religion is very... Because religion, we cannot figure out it, what's real, what's not, like we do believe in it or we don't, but it's still very enigmatic. So we don't, we can't put a reality on re religion and to put a scary face and to put a scary character on religion is very, like, because it feels very realistic as well and very close to us. Like we, we've lived with this Catholic religion all of our lives. And I think people are scared of it a little bit. With The Nun 2, what Akila Cooper uh, managed to do is to feel very closer um, to the other characters as well. So I think that the whole movie will be a lot more uh, emotional uh, then maybe the first one who was very like gothic, adventurous. This one is more intimate. Those horror genre movies and this one particularly with uh, the lightning, the sound, Valak and stuff, you need to see it in theaters. I mean, the, the whole experience of going to the theater is for this type of movies. I got involved in this project um, after um, an intense, an intense follow um, an intense meeting with Michael Chavez uh, in March, last March. And we shared together uh, lots of uh, a vision, a point of view. We share a lot of uh, creative uh, points. It was really a, a, a stunning moment of uh, creation and dialogue. 
together. This is really creative to, to work on the nun too, because each character has a lot to say and uh, are trying to explain uh, their background in their outfits. It's so marvelous to work with Michael because he's so creative and we really are not far away from our estimation in, their vi in this vision of the movie. So uh, I proposed to Michael something, a travel coat, for example, for the nuns, and he liked so much this travel coat because they, they bring a drama uh, to the character. The atmosphere, uh, you can use you can use the wall, you can use the people, you can use the buildings. Um, the convent are amazing, stunning. Uh, the, um, the roads are fantastic. It brings an atmosphere. And this is a great location for our movie. This is a vision of Michael. And I think uh, his vision here in Aix-en-Provence is a really good uh, point of view because with his eyes he rediscovered the south of France. So he, he brings some authenticity in this movie. I mean, to have, you know, conjuring, uh, between conjuring and the nun, to me this is Michael, I mean, Conjuring 3 and the nun 2, this is Michael's work. And he is authentic. This is director really authentic. He likes authenticity. It's really universal. The horror movie or the supernatural are universal. If you can get inside the story and and feeling, you know, what the the nun feel in during their travel, during the the fight with Balak. Uh, I mean, you did the great, you mean, you do the, the, the great job. You did the great job. You, you got it. It's entertainment. So I hope they will feel the same as me when I read the script. I mean, I was so in the time of horror, I do the journey with the girls, with uh, Irene and Debra. I had, I have some tender moments uh, with Maurice and Kate. Uh, so I love entertainment. So I, it's, it's really an entertainment movie for me, really. And I'm such a good public. So usually when I do creation, I do creation like I am a, a part of the, of the audience. I knew the Conjuring uh, movies, and uh, I was really interested in doing an horror movie. I've never, I've never worked on an horror movie, and really, uh, I, I'd been a, a fan of horror movies uh, when I was uh, 20, and uh, this is something really that was missing to my uh, career. First thing is, I think we can do really uh, great things with, uh, with this uh, script, and I had already uh, lots of images of uh, the atmosphere, uh, of, and it was easy, for me. It was really some not something easy, but I had uh, when I was reading it, I had all the images and all the cool things that we could do. We transformed a lot of the real location. We've not really shot the real location as, as they were. Uh, we transformed the lot, and I always try to to create a link uh, with the color chart and uh, and try to unify and uh, balance all the. The atmospheres. I think I remember all my uh, conversation with Michael from the beginning and it was mostly about the atmosphere, mostly uh, about also uh, what we could find in France, uh, about the, all the beautiful architecture and um, what I remember the most is really the, his energy from the beginning, uh, really the, and you know that uh, the script has evolved. We mainly talked about the atmosphere and also how to uh, really uh, recreate the 50s atmosphere that you had in France. And he was really uh, specific about the, the authenticity of the, the period. He, he wanted to, uh, to be informed and aware of uh, if we were totally authentic and if everything was right 
And so we tried uh, from the beginning with Emmanuel, the set decorator, to, uh, to show everything uh, from uh, this period. As it was my first horror movie, uh, Michael it helped me a lot on the techniques of, uh, of the scares and uh, how you create scares by, uh, with quiet moments. And, uh, uh, and I, tried, uh, I tried really uh, uh, to, to create these sets uh, regarding what he had told me. Uh, I think the, the audience can expect really uh, authentic sets and uh, really things that re exist so we are not only on stage sets, you have a part of, uh, of, the, of the scary atmosphere that, bring, that is brought for, uh, by histories and, uh, history and centuries of uh, real, uh, uh, real buildings. So basically when I first read the script, number one, in 25 years, I've never worked on a horror movie. So uh, I thought it was fantastic, uh, a great opportunity for me to work on a horror movie. And um, I loved the script. And um, there was a striking line in that script. Uh, it's uh, nuns do all the work and priests get all the credits. So since I read that line, I wanted to do it. So I met with Michael for the first time in Paris. And, uh, and I must say, Michael wants to shoot as practical as possible. He, it's not that he doesn't like visual effects. I think he knows a lot about visual effects. And, uh, but he doesn't want to waste time when he's on the shoot with too many procedures of visual effects. And um, basically, I understand what he wanted. Yeah, I think in this movie, for the period pieces and the 50s pieces, it has a lot to do with production design and set decoration. They're amazing. And they are doing an incredible job. They are putting us into that atmosphere. Yeah. I think also the location, and the French locations and landscape are obviously perfect and tailored for this project. Um, we found this amazing location in Aix-en-Provence, you know, at Couvent des Prêcheurs, where we shot for seven weeks. And uh, with, of course, a lot of help from the production design department and art decoration and set decoration, they did an incredible job. And we are really enhancing and helping. Demon Goat is an amazing character. It's completely original. It's been built and, and um, it, first there was a lot of design. And I think Michael Chavez had a pretty good idea about what he wanted. I think he got the help of some uh, graphic designer also for um, the, the creature. And then it was done by makeup SFX, makeup FX, sorry. Uh, who are a group of extremely talented people in this movie. Um, and we are going to only create some CG part and help that creature. I think it's the essence of that movie that needs to be done that way. And also the willing of a director uh, who is really strongly believing in uh, um, everything in camera and the visual effects to be a little bit more seamless, even though he loves it. He loves visual effects and he's very much... Uh, uh, collaborative with us. But I really hope they get a good scare. You know, I think people go see a horror movie to be scared, like when we were five years old and we were reading, uh, you know, very scary stories and we loved our parents to tell us scary stories. So I think you'll enjoy it. You'll uh, go see a good, good, scary, uh, interesting movie with amazing um, surprises in it. <laughs>